People have affairs, people we know, people we love. But that is not always the cue for divorce. Sometimes it can be the road back. The important things, anniversaries, chance to reflect on what's important. Who's important? To my wife, Hannah. With all that being said, let's go back to the split. Yes. Okay. Um, so one of my questions for you is, um, what is the overall grade? Like, a through F. <laughs> A being excellent, wonderful, F being, ooh, try again next time. <laughs> oh my God. What would you grade this television show? Oh my gosh. You have to ask me. Okay. Um, for me, I, I give it A plus. A plus. It's, to me, it's, it, was phenomenal in every way possible and the performances were just my gosh and the casting they cast it just i think perfectly right the man who plays her husband stephen mangan i don't yeah. know if i'm saying him correctly. Oh, you're saying you're right stephen mangan yes yeah yeah wow he is there's a lot of parts in that tv show where there's a lot of stillness mm. and all the actors that are their characters are called upon for that stillness they do it flawlessly and with such grace that it really feels like it's the person if you think about it it's not because there's all these lights and cameras. There's like hundred people like behind the scenes doing things while they're doing this scene. Oh my gosh, the incredibleness to like be specific with right. your actions in this scene and to portray it, but to be still on camera. Right. Man, that's a lot of learning how to work physically with your body mm -hmm. and then being able to distill it into a stillness in the shot that's yeah so i would i'd give it an a plus <laughs> uh, well let me backtrack and give a little synopsis for people who want to watch the show okay. without telling the story okay. <laughs> like the outcome of what happened so it's a it's a show that is either on hulu or you can get it on i believe uh, Brit Box or Acorn or AMC Plus, whichever one of those apps. Yeah. Um, and basically, it's about a, a a a mother who has three daughters. They run a family um, law firm focused on family and divorce. And um, uh, Nicola Walker's character is married to uh, also a man who is a barrister who goes in and actually tries the cases in front of a, uh, a, a judge, whereas uh, Nicola Walker's character is more of like the, what we would consider in America, the mediator. They kind of try to keep it out from going into court. Yeah. Um, and they've, they've been married for over 20 years. They have three kids. And there are certain things about her past that comes in including her relationship with her dad, her relationship with somebody who could potentially have been a previous love interest before she married um, her husband and how that kind of wrecks habit on their life and, and what happens with other people getting divorced around them and how that kind of influences their relationship as a couple. Yes. Um, and their relationship yes. and the relationship in the family between the sisters and the mom and 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 that. So it's yes. it's a beautiful show in that regard. And I agree with you. I give it an A. I feel like an A plus because <laughs> the way that they really delve into the different dynamics of each relationship. You know, Hannah, which is played by Nicola Walker, is the elder sister, and what that means of being the elder sister and having that responsibility. You know, and having the most memories, you know, with the dad and, and when that situation presents itself, how that affects her and her relationship with her husband and her relationship with her kids and her relationships 
at work um, yes. and her sisters and with her mom. And um, as each season comes in and there's another issue and her and how those issues just keep on stacking up and piling up against her, I thought was really great. And as an actress, what I loved about it, I was like, I, I can imagine just getting the script you know, and reading it yeah. and seeing this beautiful writing. And that just shows how good of a writer Abby Morgan is that she was able to pull out these great performances from actors from really different backgrounds. Like we saying, you know, Nicola Walker has this great, you know, vast skill set, but like Stephen Ming is not really known for dramas. He's known more for comedy. Yes, yes, you know, yes. and like from like Green Wing and like episodes, you know what I mean? Like he, yes, yes. yeah, he has that comedic background, and for him to come in and still have that comedic nature about him, but really bringing out some performances that break make you break down and cry between him and Hannah is like, like for me, the moment that sticks out for me the most is the end of season two. Oh my god! Like, what was the scene that made you? What was the scene that made stands out for you in the whole series? Because for me, it's the end of season two, and then there's, I want to say a scene, the situation between him and Hannah when she, he didn't tell her that particular situation, and she finds out when they're uh, yeah. 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 So that reaction of like, thanks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um yeah the one that sticks i guess the one well the one that sticks out for me and it wasn't one of the main characters it wasn't the Paul walker stephen mingan's character but i think it was because i was just shocked when it happened it was between rose and james okay um yeah, with what happened to their relationship in the third season. That, I know. I know. that was a definitely an unexpected situation, for sure. It was yeah. like, it never crossed your mind that that would happen. So then when it did, you were yeah. like, wow, wow, okay. Yeah, I was, I was just like, I don't want to say what it is, but I was just like, right yeah yeah yes. for sure yeah i think the whole i think the whole of season three was just unexpected situations going on like from the ending of season two going into season three i was just like I, wait when did we i felt like there was a time jump <laughs> I was I like, when did this happen? and when did this happen so yeah it's i'm still like processing season three even though i've watched it now twice <laughs> Oh, you've seen it twice. Oh my seen god. Twice. But like I'm still processing it. And this is why I say it was so cathartic for me because I was able to relate to their eldest daughter in such a way, Cassie. I think it was wow. her name. And um what she was going through seeing what was happening with her parents and how that was affecting her. So that's why I watched it a second time because I was watching it then through her eyes, whereas the first time I watched it, I was, I was watching it through Hannah and, um, I kept, for, I keep on forgetting his name, but Stephen Mangan's character's name. Yeah. Oh my God. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember his character's name, but like both of them and even Christy, I'm not going to say who Christy is, but like even Christy, his, his perspective of in it and what that meant and, um, the bombshell that happens between all of them in season two and how that leads into season three and the decisions yeah. these adults are making not realizing the fact that their decisions how it affects their kids and i think that's why i related to cassie's mm. character so much because she was making decisions because either she was it was a cry for help from you know to be like you guys are jacking me up you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I have to make this decision because I have to get away from this drama or, you know, um, I don't want to deal with this. So I have to do this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I related to her character so much from that. So watching it 
the second time through her eyes, I was like, yeah, I could see myself doing that. And I might have been guilty of doing those things that she was doing, you know, if I did those things, which I haven't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I could easily see why she did yeah. them and what was the reason behind it. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's such a, it's a refreshing show. I cried, I laughed. I How know. What, what, what I think was, was not only was the writing excellent on the show, um and the storytelling excellent but the relate the way the actors played the characters and the way they conveyed the relationships to the different characters through their bodies was very very specific very you know i think that's what really brought the show you know for me down to like wow this feels like it's really happening <laughs> right but it's it's not but they did it so well they're sending action and receiving the action was so good and they did it differently for every character right it's so interesting yeah like, what I'm, are... yeah go sorry ahead. go ahead go ahead go ahead no no oh no i was just gonna say like like you know she could have been generic nicola walker and had you know um treated christy the same way she treated her husband but it wasn't like that and it wasn't i didn't find it in the words that she was using i mean it is in the words because the writing is good but i mean she clarified it even more through her actions i felt right Just, yeah which now, is very 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 um not hard but it takes a lot of work to do mm. realize yeah. one of the things that i realized that i becoming one of those people want to watch tv and film <laughs> is wardrobe and um, how wardrobe helps tell the story because uh, uh, i know that i've seen some shows where or films or watched some films and i'm like mm, if they just wore this they would have stood out more to me with the split i felt like whoever did the wardrobe deserves an award ah uh, yes because every outfit conveyed something that was going on in the scene i felt and it and it worked for each character like it helped tell the story mm. of true, this, yeah. this type of sibling you know what i mean yes, three, yes. Siblings, there are three female siblings and they all have their different roles as siblings so it's like the eldest the middle child and the baby and how each of them were dressed showed yeah. like they were in their life in their careers in their relationships and how they were able to use that in each and every scene i thought was really well done even their mom like the way their mom was dressed um, yes. the yes. most hand matriarch of the family and keep being able to like put everybody in line no matter who they were um and and keeping that role i think everybody like that was one of the things that stood out to me as well about that show um what was it about visually or even sound or environment that that stood out for you that is true i remember um the colors that nicola walker wore like the the one there was a scene where she wore red i believe Mm -hmm. and then um and but it told the story of like hey i'm feeling you know well i don't want to give it away but i'm feeling confident here you know you could see character changes with the change of wardrobe and um the use of color yes i do believe they did very 
good with that. So it's not only in the wardrobe, but also on the set um, where the family houses of Hannah and her husband. It is to me a very um, typical um, home, nuclear family home. It's very neutral. Mm. Um, there, to, there aren't very many like striking colors in it. it right. It's really natural, the colors. So, but it gives you that feeling or it give, gave me that feeling that, oh, got it. This is a typical family, happily married couple with their three children. Their three children are going to school. It's like, oh, it's the typical scenario. But then when you, um, when, when you look at what the characters are wearing or how they're dressed, I think that's what tells you in this particular show for me. That's what told me like what was going on or if something was not right, you know, with it. I think the use of color was very, very um, smart. It conveyed in that moment what the character was going through or how they were feeling. So yeah. Um, even Nicola's hair color, like she's usually a brunette and most of the things that she does is her yeah. natural color. And this particular show, she she chooses to do a lot of blonde highlights. She um, does, yes. And like yeah. a blonde haircut. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I did notice that. Yeah. I, I felt like for that, it for me, I interpreted interpreted it as her character. I don't know. She's the typical, a typical generic scenario: wife, husband, three kids. But uh, there's something about her. She has a little spark to her that maybe says, "Well, she's not really." your typical generic, you know, scenario type of wife. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's what spoke out to me with the blonde highlights, you know, was that there's something outside of the marriage that, you know, she still needs to, I don't know, express herself in or discover. But I felt that, that gave her conveyed to me um, there was a little spark there that mm. you didn't see yeah yeah with her going through um the daily routines of life with her family you know right. getting the kids ready for school breakfast the typical banter with her husband in the morning you know um but there was something else. There was she had something else to her, and I think but I think the show did a good job in that. Right, because it's like she's the eldest sister that usually does everything that is expected of her. Like yeah. she, she makes it a point to make sure she does everything to make sure she keeps the peace and keeps everyone around her happy, even at the sacrifice of her own happiness. Yes, yes, yes. She's the caretaker. She's okay. like she's that person, and then like her middle sister is like she's the typical middle sister that like she's a little bit secretive. She's the one that's like, well, Hannah's gonna do the right thing, so I can go do the wrong thing, and nobody's yeah. gonna come after me. I don't care about the consequences. And, and then her, yeah, and her hair is different. Her hair color too. Is right, her hair. All three sisters have very different hair styles and colors. And then the very yeah. last sister is just like, I'm the baby, you know, and I didn't have to go to, you know, I didn't have to follow the family um, business and become a lawyer. I am doing me, whatever that means. Yes, yes. And her, her, her hairstyle definitely, I think, shows that it's, it's longer. It's not as conservative as like, you know, the middle sister or 
Montana, where they have to work in the law firm. It's very, and she's got some kind of bohemian, I think, style to her, too. The younger sister. Right. So she's just like the wild child. Not the wild child, but like she's the wallflower. She's the one who's like, I'm going to do me. Like, whatever that means, I'm going to just do it. Yes. yes. Right. Where the middle is more of like the, I'll do this and go to jail. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. The middle sister, she was, yeah. She was, she was that was an interesting storyline with her. Like all the way through her, her character arc. I was like, how does this girl still have her license? <laughs> I don't, I know. I know. Her, she was, I mean, where they took her character and where she took her character. I was like, whoa. Wait a minute. Right? What? She's what now? She's doing what? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, how much worse can this go? And it just gets worse and worse to the point where I think what was so great about the show is that I think the first season, for me anyway, I I inevitably ended up loving this family. You know, you love every member of this family. And then you go through the heartbreak by season two of the decisions this family make individually or together. Yeah. And then by the end of the third season, their final season, you're just like, what did I just watch? I know. <laughs> like, I know. Like you understand it, right? You understand where they have, why they're at the moments that they are. Um, yeah at the end and you're you're kind of like i get it and and like darn it why did that person do that because that left that person no other choice but to do this um yeah. which was so great um is there yeah. a particular character that you love from the show oh my gosh that is oh that's a hard one, but I will probably, I'm going to say I like Stephen Mangan's character a lot, the husband. I I felt he did a good job showing the different parts of him as a husband, as a father, as someone, you know, used to being responsible for the family. Um, but then you see this tragic side of him, you know, that is heartbreaking, literally. And, um, um, but he, he tries to manage to keep himself together for the other members of the family, including his wife, that he, and, you know, they were they end up at odds with each other but um i think um for me i think i god bless him for what he went through in that relationship and uh, right you no know, i think he just i think he did a great job with that with giving the character a lot of layers and seeing it from different perspectives okay you know like when he were, he met that author of the book, that's what I'm gonna say. I was like, "Whoa, he has this side to him!" Oh my god! Right, right, yeah. right. And I was like, "Oh, I thought you're like, you know, the husband and right." Saying, but there's another side, and I was like, "Oh, okay." But it was interesting. He brought a lot of humanity to that character because um, he was um, very much. Uh, very much, you could see the struggle he had trying to manage a different aspect of his life than the one I think we're used to seeing him do, which is the daily routines and, you know, daily banter, the typical, you know, husband, wife, children. Type of thing, but now he has he had something else happening with him, so that was that was very interesting. And right. That he, yeah. 
I, I, I empathize with you. you. I think he is one of my favorite. I feel like he, even though we can't remember, I cannot believe I can't remember this man's name. Let me look up his character's name. I feel I bad. know. This is such a shame. We're sorry, Stephen Nankin. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Um, hold on. I will tell you right now. Oh, are you looking it up? <laughs> Nathan. Nathan. Nathan Stern. Nathan. Yes, because Hannah Stern, because the, the the female last name the, of the family is the Defoe's. And then the Stearns is Hannah and Nathan. Yes, Nathan. So I agree. I think I, I liked both Nathan and Christy. I and know. I'm going to tell you why. Because there's this um, desire to be part of the family dynamic that the Defoe women have created. Mm. And how these men try to navigate their roles within the Defoe women dynamic, I think is what I loved watching about the show because there's elements of it where it could be threatening, where they could feel like they're outsiders looking in and how that affects them. Um, and then there's times where they feel like they're a part of it and they love that and they embrace it and what that meant, means for them. And I think ultimately that's the reason why the ending happens the way it does. Because mm. one, I think between those two men, one realizes that they 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 still need to be part of that dynamic of the default woman. They don't know how their life will be without it. Where I feel like one of the characters has been able to live their life without all of them and realizes that that's the better life for them. Yes, yes. You know, and and it, and that's what causes Hannah to make the decision she makes at the end. Oh. Yes, you yeah. know, and so I I love that, and even then, it's not just those two men; it's all, everybody outside of the Defoe women, the decisions they make because of the Defoe women, like that dynamic. They love the the camaraderie, you know, that this matriarch has created with her daughters because her husband did leave her, you know, yeah. with young yeah. children, and she had to build this firm from the ground up and be the success she was and people admiring that and people wanting to be a part of that um, and them having to be so protective of what they've established, you know, as mother and daughters and the relationships they bring in and, and share because of that. And I think that's what I loved to see between, between with those two men and how they had to like, kind of like, figure their place in that and what that role was, you yeah. know, and even towards the end, I don't want to say too much because I feel like then it tells the story, but like the, how the mom calls each man, her nicknames for them, or if she does give them nicknames, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that shows the admiration or love or the, how much she cares for that in particular individual individual or she's rooting for them or the hope she has for them is how yeah. she calls them you know and how she introduces them to people in her life you know what i mean like yes. you know yes. that is true that is true and you mentioned um about navigating through the lives of the default women but i i think also the show is the lead the leads are about women the mm. character it's a show but it's not just a show like oh well women yes we can do it all we can do it all i mean it's very realistic to me because they really touch on the human side of it you know what does being a woman in our society mean how does divorce look in our society, you know, um, is it, do you stay with someone because you've been with them for so long or, or should you, you know, if, is there so, is there something else out there for you? 
so it is the um but i i like that they sh they sh showed the struggles and the challenges of what it is to be a woman it's not that there's something oh, you know yeah i'm a strong woman lawyer or whatever you know and that that that's just it that's the layer that's not it you know as most women you have to navigate through um the different men in your lives you know and also the prejudice that women face you know in this society uh where you feel like you have to compete with men but i i like that they that that's at the forefront of the show which i you don't see with too many shows right now but right. this one i felt it was i felt the author did a good job with creating full rounded characters right yeah yeah yeah, I definitely agree with you. Showing the the that a woman has so many has to compartmentalize so many different things because you know she has to be a mother, she has to be a wife, she has to have the relationships outside of her household, work, being work work friends, non work friends, <laughs> um, so and cool. a competitive world. What does that look like for her? Um, and even you know being that her husband and her are in a very similar career, her being the one that brings in the most finances home, how does that dynamic affect their relationship? And her working the longer hours, you know, um, exactly. even though she, and, and being a mother of three kids, like she got pregnant and had three kids, like, and it's still going to showing up to sh show school functions and, you know, performances yeah. and games and you know how does she schedule her life around all that and at the end of the day has to like go do this brief with this couple who decided that like they don't want to be together and seeing and her putting herself in those people's situations and trying to be human to them as well and trying to help them find the right solution for their relationship whether they should end it or should keep yeah. going and have those different scenarios dealing with that at work has come into her home life um yeah. and shakes it up for her so yes yes it's it does a very good job showing the different roles that women play every day that people don't think about right you know? yeah um, yeah how, I mean, yeah, she's a high-powered attorney, but don't forget, she's also a mother of three children, you know? She's also a sister. Right. And a daughter. And a wife. Yeah, and a wife. And, and a I mean, she has so many roles in her day. Right. It's amazing how she does it all, you know? That's women, though, in our modern society today. We we have to multitask, you know, and schedule things and plan things out, plan the different aspects of our lives during the day. Right. And I, I think we don't get enough credit for that. Um, I think we've always, I think from the beginning of time to now, I think we've always been that way. I just think with society changing we it's been brought to our attention that they want us to do more <laughs> i feel like it's like oh you can do the, women can do all these things let's see how much more you can do you know what i mean like more is being brought on our plate um yeah. and i think there's like this time of like pushback like yo like we want to be able to be considered equal to our male counterparts not in the in the way that like um all boys club kind of dynamic yeah. you know but like yeah. we want to have that respect and that courtesy and acknowledgement that we do do a lot more than you guys <laughs> you know what i mean and exactly. less than you 
Yes, you know, and we can be leaders, right? And we can society. do things, but and I think one of the things that I noticed with the show was that Nathan and Hannah were able to create a partnership as husband and wife, even though they weren't in the same law firm. But like when it came to parenting, what that meant. Yes. You know what I mean, like they always there was there was a great communication between them two as husband and wife. Like, okay, what's Cassie doing? What's this one doing? Da, 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 da. This is the schedule of, of the week. This is what's happening. This is what's going on. This yeah. is the you know, this this is so and so's birthday party. We're having we're throwing it out of our house. The caterers are coming here, or I'm cooking dinner tonight. Like they still had all that great communication, but they were in a partnership. So they kept each other in the loop about what was going on with each other throughout the day, right? Yes, yes, they did. That was a yes, and yes. they were they they did they did a good job in showing that these characters they struggle to not be negligent of their children, even though they've got these booming careers. Um, you know these prominent careers in society um because you know they get into things like talking about perception how people see them because i mean you're a divorce attorney and oh you're getting a divorce like what do you you know all that stuff how that plays into that whole divorce scenario right the split as they would say yes. <laughs> yes. I don't yes. what does that mean and you know how how long does the split go like is it just the couple or is it the couple and the children or is it the couple the children and the people that they have relationships with like how far does the split affect everyone yeah in that yeah. life and and who becomes friends with who you know and exactly and, you know, not the typical things that like people are like, oh, we have to divvy up the assets and we have to um, yeah. divvy up the finances. No, it's about the relationships. Who who really gets affected when this split happens? Exactly. Um, and and I, I, I like that. I, I like that they focus more on that because it's true. Divorce, it affects everyone. Right. Is whether you're a friend or family or whoever you are, and you know the person, it affects you. Right. And it does so in different ways. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, I, I, I did like that part of, yeah, rather than, oh, it's an ugly divorce between a prominent lawyer and her, you know. <laughs> right. And her, and her, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 husband attorney as well, you know, and it's like, oh, who's gonna get what, and blah blah blah, and do I get the children on the weekends or stuff? But it was about how it affected everybody the mother, her sisters, her children, um, even her child's boyfriend, you know, I mean. And then other relationships she had outside that dynamic. Yeah. It was it was very, I think it was very thoughtfully created and it was um very well written, you know. So um, one of the themes that I think came up a lot throughout the series was cheating. Was what, sir? Cheating, cheating, cheating yes, and what that does to a relationship. Yes, um, whether the person is being cheated on or they're participating in the act of being the other person in a relationship. Um, yes, I. <laughs> what did you? What was your take on it? Oh, um, I think. That cheating doesn't have to necessarily be physical, but mm -hmm. it could also be emotional. Um, because I think 
um, wait, am I allowed to say this or is this giving away the show? But I don't know. you know, um, you don't necessarily have to have a physical relationship with the person to be cheating on your spouse or your boyfriend or girlfriend, but clearly um, the character had a strong connection with the person they were cheating with. And, but, you know, on the out to the, to the outside eye, it's like, oh no, they're not cheating. They just work together, all oh, this and all that. But no, in fact, she was cheating every time she thought about him, or she fantasized about him, or she remembered the past relationship she had with him. Um, yeah, it was it, it was very much about that, and um, also the decision where you feel like, well, I'm not trying to be a bad person by cheating. It's just that. I have a really strong connection with this person that I don't anymore with my husband. I have a strong connection with my husband in one way, but not in another way. You know, it's like you, you have different things that you relate to and you click with, with different people. And then the decision of like, should I act on my fantasies that make me feel alive and real and you know well or do i go back to routine person like, okay this is me i'm the wife i'm the breadwinner i'm the mother i have to take care of this we gotta do the pta meetings we gotta do, okay you gotta go to your soccer practice you gotta do this you gotta do that or like just i don't know in in this sport you know, right kind of like coming alive with the person but i think it's a, it was a good uh, you know not judging what's right or wrong but right either, but just the struggle that the character went through with that um that's that i think was what was apparent to me in it it's like what do you do <laughs> right i think what was so great was that there was multiple relationships in the show that people were just cheating on their other significant other oh my and god yes facts of the cheating whether it was just physical whether it was emotional, whether it was a mixture of both, whether it was um, the other person knowing that it was going on and choosing to just shut their eyes to it, because if, yeah. if they did it to themselves, then that would be the, the end all of the relationship. I think um, it definitely changed when, when children got involved, obviously. Um, and cause then it was like, now children are involved, children are aware of what's going on. How does that affect, you know, how we continue this infidelity or this relationship? Um, yeah. and, and when those relationships, whether this, the person being cheated on decides to accept it and, and decide, okay, I'm going to forgive this person and we're going to move forward. Or it's like, I told my spouse and they're willing to forgive me, but I have to have nothing to do with you. And, you know, what does that mean? You know, and I'm going to step away and you're never going to see me again, <laughs> you know, and how yeah. that other person may have realized in that moment that they were more involved with the individual than the individual was involved with them. And um, yeah. I, for me, it's just why it's, what was the reasoning why they felt that they had to, step out of a relationship or participate in a relationship when they themselves were single um but you know willing to break up somebody else's relationship why what was it that they were seeking um mm -hmm. 
by doing this. I think that was what was so cleverly done about the show, the humanity aspect about it. It's like some people generally don't mean to hurt people's feelings. Um, they they just they don't see that far ahead, you know. Yeah. Moment. Yeah. Oh, as actors, we're like, stay in the moment. You're in the moment. I know. <laughs> you know, and you be in the moment. And it's like these people that be in the moment, they're not thinking about what happens to the people around them after they've done this thing. It's always after the fact. You know, it's like, oh crap. What did yeah. I do? <laughs> you know? And I think that was what was so beautifully done. I think there's so many life lessons in the show. Yes. Um, yes. For women, for men, for people in relationships, for people that are single and not sure if they want to be in relationships. Um, people, and, and not even just relationships between the couples, but like relationship with family members and those dynamics and what boundaries you set up and what um and what you're capable of as an individual and what you can be for the other person and vice versa yeah yeah, yeah. it was yes it was a very very it was the portrayal of of, of divorce was done beautifully as you said um, on this show, it, and it, I don't think it was handled the typical way you would normally think divorce is handled. Right. It definitely went into a lot of um, different aspects of life, you know? Um, yeah. Different scenarios, different times in your life, and, you know, how much a person's willing to take. Definitely what the show got right and what the actors did it very excellent on was the stakes. Right. The theme, <laughs> this word, the acting role, the stakes. The stakes. <laughs> what are the stakes? Right. Is it urgent? Is it, you know, those questions like, is this a typical thing that happens in my day? Or is this, oh no, this is not a typical thing. What do I do? But I think, yeah, they, the, the writing and the acting and the directing was definitely all, all very, very well played together, I thought. Yeah. yeah. Now, one of the things that you said that I really want to touch on for anybody who is watching this and they're interested in acting or writing or directing is, we keep on saying this throughout this whole time, is the writing. <laughs> How important is the writing in any aspect of TV, film, theater, radio, voiceover? Oh, wow. Um, it's very important, I think, the writing. Um, it's the basis for what, you know, forms the story and how it's how it's told um so it i think it's very important as a viewer the writing it is important as an actor as well but i would say as an actor this is a true one i would say even if the writing is not altogether there which I've seen, you know, films and movies where the acting was phenomenal, but the story was like trash. <laughs> I will just say, um, you still have to do your job as the actor, you know? Um, if you feel like, I guess if you're talking to an actor, um, from an actor's point of view, right? It doesn't matter what the writing is, if the or what the acting is. If you're not getting the information from the act, from the writing, I mean, you then you have to be creative. This is where the creativity takes place. You have to be creative in showing, or in you have to imbue 
you know like if the character is not giving you like what you think maybe you need in the scene you have to imbue it you have to you have to craft that yourself very carefully so um good writing is always helpful and it's great right um when you have the words there that that fit just right you know in the scenario but like we talked about earlier um acting is about physicality and it's the actor's job not to write but to convey the message physically through their bodies so um um lift it off the page is what exactly. a lot of, a yes, lot of exactly. <laughs> acting tutors like to say lift it from the page yeah if yeah. you're really I mean, I, I agree with you. I feel like, but I've also felt like, and maybe it's be, this is another thing we can talk about, is that as a person of color, you're being Filipina, I'm being Caribbean American, when we get auditions and we get sides, and sometimes we read the sides and we're like, oh my goodness. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes it's really hard to lift from the page when you're not excited about what you're reading. Yes. How do you approach that when you have an audition day? Sometimes you may not necessarily want to do it because mm -hmm. you've got the material and you're like, oh, but <laughs> you also want to still be a good um, participant. And you want to do your work as an actor and still do the audition, but then sometimes you're like, Ugh, if it doesn't, if I don't get it, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, as an actor, you don't want to ever put out a dead performance, you know. So um, that's tough. That's a very good question, but that's tough. Um, that's what I do is I, I am you. So say the line is like, um, uh, I, I, I take the line and if it's a line then I'm like, okay, that's like a typical, you know, stereotypical thing to say or whatever. I'll take it but I will come up with my own meaning for it. I'm trying to think of a scenario, but like for the actor, if you're reading it, it's if you're reading a book, it's different. If you're reading a script, it's different. But if you are acting the words, um, you have to put, you still have to put in the subtext so i would put in a different subtext that makes me excited even though the words on the page are not exciting mm -hmm. but it makes me excited and um i put myself in that scenario and even though i'm saying the words my body is in the scenario that's making me like okay i want to do my objective in this scene i want to do you know try to think of a scenario with that um i feel like let's be safe so let's say um you're doing a shakespeare you know you're doing classical text and you for most women we're used to like the typical male roles of i mean female roles of like juliet and and helena or you know now what yeah. if you shakespeare and they want you to do a male role that you've never even imagined yourself playing so let's say um jack was or um uh the tempest you're playing prospero and they name it prospera you know something like that 
um, or playing Mercutio in Romeo and Juliet, what would your... Wow. What would my approach be? Right. Wow. Um, that is interesting. Oh, gosh. Oh, you're really asking all the hard questions. Okay. <laughs> Whew. Um, well, I mean, you do have to be realistic with yourself. I'm, you know, I'm, I've never lived as a man for me personally. I never have. But can, oh my gosh. Can I think we I think use the like that. Shakespeare and what people don't realize why people still love Shakespeare to this day is that the writing is still so relevant and so well written of humanity that I feel like it's almost like cheating like with his text because he kind of gives you a roadmap right for each and every character. Yes. yes yes and it's so well written out I mean that that is good writing right there all the creativity there is like an actor's you know um smorgasbord shakespeare's writing but um so let's say i don't know um henry the eighth then i i you know I, you're called to play that so how would i approach that hmm. Well, I'm not going to start by trying to, like, for me personally, I'm not going to start by trying to, like, be a man and, you know, I got to be a do manly things and things like that. But I would start with my objective. And, you know, um, can I, what do I crave in this scene? I, I, do I crave women? Do I crave power? and control do i do i crave um not caring about the rules because i can i'm the rule maker you know i'm the head of the church and um so then i would focus on that that's what's given to me in the scene and then I would try to find a parallel in my life that can relate to it. Mm. And that's what I would use. Um, but I wouldn't, I don't know. I just, I think it's, it's a little cliche unless you're doing like a, I don't know, a comedy or a satire or something of it, like an SNL sketch. But, Right. I mean, that's where I would start thinking about, and then, um, then I would work physically with it. I think, um, because it has to be you in the given circumstances, right? So how would I? How would I react if, let's say, like, I'm the boss, I'm all in control, I'm almost like God, and these people don't want to do what I'm saying? Right. I can relate to that because, you know, there has been times where I've, I've been the leader and someone does not want to do what I'm telling them to do. But if it is the best thing for them to do, but they don't do it. So I would approach it from that perspective. When I think of that, I get a certain feeling in my body, mm -hmm. in the pit of my stomach, and it kind of like, you know, brings out like a, like a, you know, no, I'm not, you are going to do this. This is not something... But then when I think of that, when I, it brings up certain feelings in my body and that's what I use in the scene. Right, and right. That makes sense. It's a little complicated, I know, and hard, 
for me to explain, I think, but that's how I would, I would approach it if I was going to play like a male character in the Shakespeare um, storyline. I would, I, that's how I would personally do it. Uh, people have different ways of doing it, um, but um, because once it, I feel like once it, it's in your body, you, you, that, that feeling you have in your body, it's what will propel you to take you there to that scene and that objective. You know, getting the person to listen to you. Like, look, I need an heir. Right. That's just the rule. I mean, it's not, you know, I could think of it as, it's not me being greedy, but what do you want me to do? And my wife does not have the ability to do that. But I am still the ruler and I have an obligation, you know, to the institution. Right. Um, to fulfill that and to, for the people if i don't have that what becomes of this it becomes an unstable ground and we can't have that i'm the ruler i'm the leader i've got to lead with purpose and the purpose is to produce a male heir right so i would you know i mean i think it drawing the parallels in your life to the scenario helps a lot it helps me a lot anyway with um trying to relate to how the character is feeling at that moment right right um the That's institution of the monarchy Ugh. yeah i know yes, yes. A whole, well you know what i have to bring you back i want to do a panel of a few other people with you on the crown um I should have named that. That's a recent show, and it didn't come here. I was thinking, like, oh my gosh, what show such a the crown? Yes, I would love to do a panel. Yes, yeah, so we'll, I'll invite you back to Mola's talk, and we'll do a panel with like two or three other people where we discuss the crown and and what that is and that view of monarchy and the roles of these because it's it's a fictionalized story of real people. Yes, and you know, especially the drama that has been ensuing these last couple of years with the monarchy. Um, I know. Yeah. What does that mean? So that would be something that I think that would be fun. And I think it's a great time for us to wrap up. So thank you so much, Vita. Thank well, you for thank sharing you. your thoughts on the split and on the entertainment industry as, a, as an actor and producer yourself. And can't wait to bring you on next time. Oh, I thank can't so wait. Much. And thank you for inviting me. This was so much fun. <laughs> no one tells you how hard divorce really is. And expensive. You have to let go of the life plan if you want the life waiting for you. No, you got me there. Is that tears for fears or Kirk Cobain? I know what death looks like, and I'll be ready. You're a terrible woman, Melanie. But what else is your lawyer for? Nathan and I. We're broken. I still... Love you.